everybody welcome back in this video we are going to understand the human tasks as well as the gateways so human tasks are very important why because these are the main action these are the main <laughs> actions or bpm and actions that actually plays a very important role because of which you know the requests are assigned to a human and they take action and gateways plays a very important role to decide where to move to the flow next so that is very important to understand let's understand that so what we are going to look at we are going to understand the human tasks we are also going to understand gateways here so let us understand the human task first of all so human task as the name represent human tasks so human task activity enables you to model how users interacts with the application now for example as an initiator i have a form and i initiate the request when you will re initiate the request it will be assigned to a human that is called a task meaning a task will be assigned to a human so to assign that task you have to use human task activities so understand how end user interacts with the task in workspace in the runtime environment like when i say interact meaning approve reject okay and then learn how to create and implement human task activities in the designer we will understand all those so end user basically has two main actions to do one like i told you they can actually go to the workspace and start the request like initiate the live request this is for the end user and then complete submit the form done the another like when you start the application your manager or your you know the hr manager or maybe hr hr manager has to view that request and complete that assigned task whatever task has been assigned to them they have to complete when i say complete they have to take action till the time they take an action the process will be stuck here in case if you even if you do expire or you you know based on some time like till the time user completes the task you know proceed further so till the time you any user take an actions it will be stuck here and once user take an action it will proceed further so <clears throat> human task activities represent part of your process where an end user process participants is required to perform an action so these are the there are two types of human task activities which enables you to model different types of interaction one submit task like this is one of the activity and second activity is approval task so basically first approval task meaning when you initiate the activity it has to be assigned to your managers that you will assign using approval task activity where you will show the same form like user has submitted and your approval must review or complete and then perform a certain actions the user might approve or reject the request or not only these two actions other actions can be taken submit task so when let's suppose user <coughs> rejects the task it goes back to the requester so for that to assign the task to the requester we have to use submit task so it displays a form that the user must submit to create a request or to provide information about a certain subject so here you have two activities submit and approve so approval task actions so when the request raised and it assigned to manager they have to take action so by default approval task action will have two custom actions called approve and reject approval human task activities let you define an approval pattern by specifying actions so these are the two actions by default but you can add comma separated more actions here so by default the following two actions are already configured one is approve second is reject in case you want to change those two you can do that as well that is completely customizable and these are called custom actions these are another type of actions called system actions like reassign like terminate the process like more info something like this okay withdraw so these are the system actions that you cannot change however you can also define custom actions such as hold and more info whatever you like so 
assign a human task activity to a specific user or users or to a users in a certain role. So the task can be assigned to one user or multiple users or in a in a group as well or to a users in a certain role. So whenever you use that human task, you will have two options. One is called participant and second is the policy. Under participants, you can say current lane participant, meaning current swim lane participants. For example, you have assigned one role, let's say manager. And under manager, you have two users. So the task will be assigned to two users. That is called current lane participants. Second is individual assignee. Instead of, you know, um, you know, taking the users from that swim lane roles, you can say individual assignee. For example, you are raising a request. The request should be assigned to your manager. So we should have a manager coming from maybe some API. So you will send the requester ID and you will get the manager, right? So you can get the manager and then you will assign as an individual assignee using a expression, okay? Then you have a policy like any single assignee, maybe in individual assignee, you are assigning a particular group, okay? Meaning any user can take a request. Or if you have two users here, all the users can take actions in parallel, one by one. Meaning, let's suppose you have user A comma B, Meaning first A have to take action and then B. All assignees in sequence. Meaning, for example, you have A comma B. Then A and B will take actions in sequence. Management chain in sequence is another option. We will check this later. So when you will configure that human task properties, you will see two options, policy and select participant. Configure task escalation or expiration under the same activity human task you can escalate the task or you can expire the task. Why we escalate? Because user has not taken any action in a predefined time. So you want to escalate that task to their manager. Or you want to, for example, sometimes what happens, okay, fine, user has not taken an action. Now I want it to completely expire the task. The task has been passed away. For example, I have assigned one survey and there's a time of the survey, right? If the time passes, of course, why I will escalate, right? I will simply expire the task and user cannot take action anymore on this. Configure a human task in a structured or dynamic process to never expire, to expire after a certain time or to escalate after a certain time passes. So you do have three options like never expire. The task will never expire. Task will remain in the work list of user till the time they take actions. Expire. I wanted to expire the task like survey. I want to expire the task even if user has not taken any actions you know, in a certain time. Escalate, meaning user has like, you know, approval. They have not taken any action. So I want to escalate to the maybe managers to manager. So you will have all those options and you can define who can escalate. The task can be escalated to whom and, and what will happen. So you can also set configure due date and priority. So every task that you assign must have some due date. It's not mandatory, but you should have it, right? Like you, you, you bought your bills and every bill will have some due date. If you don't, you know, we pay the bill, of course, you will be charged extra, but the task will be there with you till the time you complete it, it will be there. Similarly, priority. Sometimes tasks are high priority that has to be taken immediately. You can set all those. Specify a due date and priority for a human task activity. After the due date is reached, the task is marked as overdue, but task will remain under the user's work list. Priority can be, you know, high, normal, and low. So from here, you can set the level and due on. Then you can send the reminders also. So when do you send reminders? Maybe user has not taken any actions and I want to send reminder. So you can specify the reminder as, as well, like remind once, remind two times, remind three times. So you can have at maximum three reminders and you can decide when I want to send reminder before the task is getting expired or just after the assignment or before the due date. Okay, so these are the three options that are available that you can set. Before expiration, if you want the reminders to be sent before the task expires, after assignment, if you want the reminders to be sent right after the task has been assigned. Before due date, if you want the reminders to be sent 
before the due date of the task. Now, another is gateways. Gateways are very important. So we have three gateways in Oracle process automation, exclusive gateway, inclusive gateway, and, you know, parallel. So gateways are basically decide where the request will flow after user takes an action, after request comes in. Okay. So we have first exclusive gateway. Exclusive gateway can consider like if, else if, else if, else if. Right. If that condition does not evaluate to true, go to the another, check that condition. If that is also false, go to the another one. If that is okay, then move forward. If all conditions that you have decided are not, if, uh, does not evaluate to true, then there will be an else branch, otherwise branch. That is called exclusive gateway here. So it allows business processes to split into two or more paths. One path is executed at a time based on the condition must have at least one default like this cross symbol indicate that is the default activity. Another is very important, inclusive. Takes one or more path. Sometimes I wanted to, you know, evaluate two parts at the same time. Based on six, maybe two will be true and both will be executed. Like, um, I, I have ordered something. Okay, in the order I have, my, I, I wanted to order something. I have menu, I wanted to order pizza, I wanted to order burger. And so basically I will, I will say, hey, if I'm, I you know, if I'm ordering two, all the items should cook in parallel. Okay, so that is one of the, you know, example of inclusive gateway. So what will happen in this, when you will send the request, you know, what will happen? What will happen? your request will be distributed into multiple tokens like C1, C2, and C3. So these are the conditions. You put one condition here, you put one other condition here, you put another condition here, and there's a default path also, right? So what will happen? Your, your you know, token will wait here on the merge action. So there will be an inclusive and merge action, and between that, you can have multiple uh, activities here, and then all those activities will have some conditions here. So what will happen? For example, this C1, and C3 evaluates to true. For example, you have completed that task. For example, you know, pizza is cooked, but not burger. Okay. So it will wait. You see, it's waiting here till the time this task is also completed. As soon as this task is completed, all the tasks will be merged here and it will proceed. That is inclusive gateway when you want it to do more than one task at a time. You know, and if, if not, if, if not a single condition evaluates to true, then default path will be executed. Then you have parallel, like I'm booking for my visit. So I wanted to book hotel, I wanted to book, you know, uh, flights, I wanted to book app. So why I need to wait, you know, one for another? I will book everything at a time. So it takes all the paths simultaneously. So when you will start it, again, the token will wait here till the time all the requests, all the activities gets completed. As soon as the task, all the activities gets completed, it will merge here and it will proceed further. So guys, this is all about your, you know, uh, the human task and gateways. As a conclusion, we have covered human task. We understood, you know, two ta human tasks like approval task, submit task, and we understood three types of gateway inclusive, exclusive, and parallel. That's all about this. Thank you. Bye-bye.